Hello, today we're looking at Schrodinger's cat and for the avoidance of doubt I should make clear that no cats were ever harmed in this experiment because it was a thought experiment. It was never actually done in reality. I've already posted a video on the Einstein Podolsky Rosen paradox which was written in 1935 and which purported to say that quantum mechanics was incomplete. Now Schrodinger's thought experiment on his cat was also produced in 1935 and Schrodinger was using it to illustrate that some of the ideas of quantum mechanics were absurd if you put them into the real world. He was therefore challenging a key interpretation of quantum mechanics by the Copenhagen group. To understand this, let's first consider what happens when you toss a coin. We often use the spin of a coin as a means for determining some random outcome. The coin will fall either heads or tails. But which is it? Well, we don't know until we look. When we look, we find that it is in fact heads. It always was heads. From the moment it landed in, on my hand, it was heads. I only found out that it was heads when I took my hand away and looked at the coin. Now in this respect, it's different from quantum mechanics. So when we tossed the coin, we didn't know whether it had landed heads or tails until we looked. But what we could say is that once it landed, it was either heads or tails, in this case it was heads, even before we looked. Looking at it simply confirmed what was already the case, but we didn't know it because we hadn't looked. Quantum mechanics says, no, that's not true. If, for example, you're looking at the spin of an electron and you find that that electron has a spin that is up, it had a spin that was up when you looked at it, but that does not mean, in quantum mechanics, that it had a spin up before you looked at it. It could have had a spin down. And what the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics says is that an electron has a superposition of quantum states. It is therefore both up and down at the same time, but it only becomes up or down when you look at it. Prior to that, it's in a combination of being both up and down. And it was that that Schrodinger was challenging by his Schrodinger's cat. Let's take some radioactive material. We'll take, let's say, a kilogram. And radioactive material will decay. It will emit radioactive um, rays and uh, it will decay. And it will decay in a half-life. If the half-life is, say, a week, then what that means is that one week later you will have half of what you had before. So you'll have half a kilogram. And one week later, still, you'll have half what you had before. You'll have a quarter of a kilogram. What that means in practice is that during this week, one half of all the atoms in this radioactive material here have decayed. But one half of them haven't. The half that haven't are still here. And in the following week, half of them will decay, but half of them won't. So the question is, if you take any given atom in that radioactive material and you ask yourself the question, when will it decay? The answer is, you don't know, and there's no way of knowing. It might decay in that week, it might decay in that week, it might decay in the next week, or the week after, or so on. There's no way of knowing. And what the quantum mechanical people say is that until you look at that particular atom and find out whether it's decayed or not, it is in a quantum superposition of states of being both decayed and not decayed at the same time. So this is Schrodinger's thought experiment. Remember, it's a thought experiment. No cats were harmed. He says, let's take a steel box with a lid. And inside it, we will put this atom, a 
single atom. It's a thought experiment. And we will also put a cat. And we will put a Geiger counter. A Geiger counter measures radioactivity. So if this atom decays, the Geiger counter will click and measure it. And attached to the Geiger counter, we will have a tube of cyanide, poisonous gas. And the idea is that if the atom decays, then the Geiger counter will detect the decay, will trigger the cyanide and release it, and the cat will die. If, on the other hand, the atom doesn't decay, then the Geiger counter won't detect it, the cyanide won't be released, and the cat will live. But here's the question. How do you know whether the atom has decayed? And therefore, how do you know whether the cat is dead or alive? The answer is you don't, unless you open the box and look inside. Now, quantum mechanics would say that that atom has a wave function, which is a combination of that atom being both decayed and not decayed, a superposition. And until you actually look and see whether it's decayed or not, that's how the wave function describes the atom. As soon as you look and find out whether it has decayed or not, and you know for certain, then the wave function is said to collapse because there's now no longer any probability that you don't have to say it might be in one state or it might be in another. It now definitely is decayed or not decayed because you've looked to see. And what Schrodinger said was, well, if you're saying that the wave function before you open the box is a superposition of decayed and not decayed, then you must also say that the cat has a wave function of dead and not dead. The cat is both dead and not dead at the same time. And Schrodinger said, that's a nonsense. And for what it's worth, Einstein agreed with him. So the quantum physicist says that until you look, the atom is in a combination of states of being both decayed and not decayed, and its wave function reflects that. And the only way that you can find out what has actually happened is to open the box and look and see if the atom has decayed or not, in which case the wave function will instantly collapse because you now know for certainty whether the atom has uh, decayed or not. But here's an intriguing question. We know whether the atom has decayed or not only when we open the box. And so the wave function for us collapses when the box is opened. But what about the cat? The cat knows whether the atom has decayed or not the minute it decays, because as soon as it decays, it releases the uh, radiation, that's picked up by the Geiger counter, that releases the cyanide, and the cat starts to feel very ill. So the wave function for the cat, as far as the cat's perception of the atom is concerned, the wave function will collapse the moment that atom decays. Indeed, it's questionable whether it was a wave function of a mixture at all, because the cat is observing the atom, and so long as it hasn't decayed, the cat is alive. So there is no superposition of states from the cat's point of view, because all the time the cat is alive, the atom isn't decayed. And as soon as it does decay, the cat dies. So from the cat's perspective, there is no superposition. There's only a superposition for us, because we don't know whether the atom has decayed or not. So what we can say there is that the cat's existence is entangled with the state of the atom. Either the atom is undecayed and the cat is alive, or the atom is decayed and the cat is dead. No other option is possible. The two states are what is said to be, in quantum mechanics terms, entangled. The one depends on the other. So Schrodinger's cat thought experiment was simply designed to contrast what goes on in the quantum mechanical world of subatomic physics and what goes on in the real world that we observe. In the real world, when we toss a coin, we say that the coin comes down either heads or tails. It's definitely one or the other, but we don't know which it is until we look. The quantum mechanics world says that if you're considering whether an atom decays or you're considering an electron spin or any of the features 
of a subatomic particle, that they, all of those features coexist together until such time as you look to see what they really are. So the electron spin will be a combination of up and down, a superposition of up and down, until you look. And when you look, you will find that it's up or down, but you cannot conclude that it was up or down before you looked.